Hey guys, it's Michael here from FlySight. In this video, I want to show you how to download and install the FlySight Viewer and how to get started using it. So the first thing you'll want to do is download it. So open up a web browser and go to flysight.ca slash wiki. From here, open up the FlySight Data Viewers link and then the cross-platform FlySight Viewer link. You can see there are versions for Windows and for Mac. We'll go through how to install each of these separately in this video. So first for Windows, let's download the Windows version. Once it's downloaded, we need to find where it downloaded to. So in Chrome, I can click this little down arrow and say, show in folder. And you can see it went into my downloads folder. So the next thing I'll do is I'll right click on that file and say extract all. And I'll accept the defaults and say extract. So this is extracted into a folder called flysite viewer win. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that last folder and I'm going to copy it onto my desktop. To open the FlySite Viewer, open that folder that you created and open the FlySite Viewer application uh, with the little fly icon next to it. If you get a security warning like this, you can dismiss it and just say run. To install on the Mac, we'll first download the Mac version. Once this is complete, we should be able to find our download in the Downloads folder. The download is a drive image, so if we double click on it, it'll open up as a drive on the desktop. You can see that drive is automatically opened. The first thing we want to do is we want to copy the FlySite Viewer into our Applications folder. So I'll go to the Applications folder. And I can click and drag the FlySite Viewer into that folder. The next thing we can do is we can make a shortcut to the FlySite Viewer in the dock just to make it easier to get to it. So I'm going to click and drag the FlySite Viewer into the dock. Now the first time we install the FlySite Viewer, if I just try to click on it to run it, we'll get this error window. To get around that, the first time you run the FlySite Viewer, right-click on it and then click Open from the menu that comes up. Once this window comes up, click the Open button and the FlySight Viewer will open. In the future, you can open the FlySight Viewer just by left-clicking on the FlySight icon in your dock, as you usually would. This is how the FlySight Viewer comes up the first time you run it. I'm going to increase the size of the windows on the bottom here just a little bit. In the top here, we have a plot view, and we'll be able to see plots of elevation, speed, that kind of thing here. In the bottom, we have the top, the side, and the front view. And these will show actual 3D views of our jump. On the right, we have a map view that shows where we're located in the world. Uh, we can also show satellite imagery under our track using the map view. Let's import a track. So we can go to the File menu and Import Track, or we can hit Control t If I go to my desktop, I have some files. When you open up your own FlySite, this is what you'll see. You'll see folders that are named according to the date that the track was created. And then the individual tracks are named according to the time it was created. Now these dates and times, unless you've changed your configuration file, are all in UTC. 
uh, so they may not actually correspond to your local time. I'm going to port the last track here. So the first question a lot of people have is, where is the jump? What we're looking at here initially is a plot of elevation versus time. So we start off on the ground, we climb to altitude, the plane spends a little bit of time at altitude, and then there's a sudden drop at the end, which is the skydive. Right now we're just seeing elevation, but we can look at more plots. So if I go to the left menu, we can see horizontal speed, vertical speed, total speed, etc. There are plenty of options here. You can select these either by clicking on them in the left menu, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts, which are noted next to them. So for horizontal speed, I can hit H on the keyboard. So what I'll often do is I'll turn on horizontal speed and vertical speed right away. So I'll hit the H key and the V key. One thing you'll notice here is that when we move the cursor in the plot view, there's a small black dot that moves in the other four views. And the same is true in the other direction. If I put my cursor over a certain point in the map view, we can see a black dot in the plot view that tells us where that actually is. Next, let's look at the basic controls in the FlySight viewer. So the first thing that we'll want to do probably is to zoom into the jump. Uh, if we go to the tools menu, you can see there's a zoom tool. We can also get that just by hitting the Z key. Once we've hit the zoom tool, if we click and drag in the plot view, we'll see this green bar that shows where we're about to zoom into. And when I let go, we zoom in. So now we're looking at just the skydive. If I hit the P key, this is panning. So we can pan from left to right. Now if I click and drag, it just moves the view. And one thing that you can see here is that the uh, the plots automatically scale to whatever's in the view. One place where people really notice this is with the glide ratio. So I'm going to show the glide ratio plot. And it looks strange. We see these spikes on the left side and then an absolutely straight line through the skydive. And the problem here is that when you look at the, uh, the scale on the left, the glide ratio is actually going from minus 2,000 up to 4,000, which of course is way outside of our limits. And you can see why that is uh, when we're actually in the aircraft, uh, the aircraft's flying almost level. And so we're going to see some crazy glide ratios there. There are two ways you can, can solve this. One is to zoom into the jump itself. So if I hit the Z key, and then I zoom in from after I've actually exited the aircraft until say roughly where I open. Now the glide ratio, that, uh, that dark teal line uh, makes a little bit more sense. And the more we zoom in, the more we're gonna see details on that glide ratio. The other option is that we can actually fix the range for glide ratio. So let's take a look at the preferences for the FlySight viewer. If I go to File, Preferences, this is where we'll set most of the options for the software. In the General tab, we can set the units. So we can choose Imperial or Metric units. In the Aerodynamics tab, we can set options for the aerodynamic tools in the FlySight viewer uh, for calculating the coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag, and so on. Plots tab is what we really want to look at right now. I can take the lower right corner of the preferences pane and I can open it up a little bit. Now what we can see is that for each plot, we can choose the color of that plot and we can also choose the minimum and maximum values. So let's say for glide ratio, I can set the minimum to zero and the maximum, if I click the checkbox, it's using the maximum. And now if I double click on the number, I can change that, for example, say to 10 to one. And hit enter and then okay to get out of preferences. And now we see that no matter where we're zoomed in, the glide ratio always has a minimum of zero and a maximum of 10. So that makes it a little bit easier to see. 
There are two different ways that we can zoom in and out. One is using the zoom tool like we did earlier. But no matter what tool we're in, we can use the mouse wheel or a scrolling gesture on a trackpad uh, to zoom in and out. And that's what I've been doing quite a bit here. So if I pull the mouse wheel back toward me, I zoom out. And if I push it forward, I zoom in. There's one last tool I want to look at here, and that's the measure tool. We can again choose it either from the tools menu or I can hit the M key. With the measuring tool selected, when I click and drag in the plot view, we'll see this small window that tells us the value of each plot at this point in time. Uh, it also tells us the change from where we started clicking and dragging to where we ended, and that's with the round brackets. And then the value with the square brackets is the average value in that time. So for example, I can ask how much my horizontal speed changed from early in the jump to later in the jump. And I can click here and drag to the end. And I can see I lost about five miles an hour of horizontal speed through that portion of the jump. That covers the basics of using the FlySight Viewer. Uh, we'll cover more advanced topics later on. And as always, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.